Focusing on the present, looking to the future. So, those of us from Kansas and Missouri want to once again welcome you to Kansas City and say thank you for coming and for having such a great conference here in, in Kansas City. I'm wondering how many of you are at uh, an SABE conference for the very first time, a national SABE conference. Raise your head, hand high. Great, welcome. I hope that this isn't your last one. I hope it's your first of many. We're gonna be talking a little bit, and I'm not gonna be talking at all, you'll be happy to hear, um, about issues and looking at issues of self-determination in the future. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by thinking a little bit about self-determination in the past. And I wonder, thinking about the past, I had a little conversation with the, the powers that be with, say, folks like Chester and Tia and Nancy, who all tell me what to do and when to do it. And I listen because I'm a smart person. And um, we, we kind of figured out that the first kind of full-blown official SABE conference was held in 1991 in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm curious how many people in the audience were here, were there for that 1991 Nashville SABE conference. Stand up or raise your hand or do something to show people. Good for you all. So 20 years from now, those of you who are here for the first time, when somebody asks who was at the Kansas City Conference, you can stand up and show that you've been an important part of an important movement for a long time. Now, as Tia mentioned, I've worked for the last 20 years on efforts that support the self-determination of people and students and youth and adults with and without disability. And I want to when I when I first began that work, I was I was hired at the Ark of the United States on a grant that was going to develop some curricular materials to help adolescents become more self-determined, to help teenagers with disabilities become more self-determined. And two weeks after I had been hired, I went to the ARC's 40th anniversary conference, which in 1990 was held in uh, Orlando, Florida. And my first action as director of that project was to meet with my bosses. And my bosses were the members of the ARC's self-advocacy committee, the national committee. And that committee was chaired by a man who became a close friend of mine and, and who unfortunately is no longer with us, Ray Gagney. I know that some of you will know Ray. And I often, when I talk to groups of teachers and other people, I tell them that everything I need to know about self-determination I learned from Ray Gagney. But that's only partially true because everything I learned about self-determination, I learned from Ray but I also learned from the other person that was on that committee and there that day when we sat down to talk about ways to promote the self-determination of young people with disabilities, and that is your very own Nancy Ward. And I want to ask Nancy to come up here to further increase my social capital. She's been doing this for 20 years. She's tired of increasing my social capital. She wants me to get some of my own dadgum social capital. We go back a long way, and this is somebody 
who I respect and admire and who has taught me an awful lot. And that's true for folks like Tia and Chester and a lot of you. It's been great to see renew old friendships and to make new friends. So I wanted to ask Nancy, now that the picture's taken, thank you, Laura. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna be talking about the future of self-determination, but I wanted to, to ask Nancy some questions to, to think about where we've come, because we've been doing this for a while. So first of all, Nancy, when, when you think back to when we met back in, in Orlando and you saw me come in and thought, oh boy, here's somebody else I have to teach. Yeah. <laughs> somebody else I got to, you know, learn. And, and, and hopefully I've been a good student. Yes, you have. You know, what did you think would happen? 20 years ago, there really was no mention of self-determination for people with disabilities. What, what were your expectations? What would you, did you think might happen? Well, like Mike said, there was no concept of what self-determination was. And so what I was hoping to see is that people with disabilities would be able to define that concept and say what self-determination is. And I was hoping that people would be able to dream and to see those dreams come true by living in their own homes and being a part of their community. So I'm gonna go off script for just a moment and make Nancy nervous. <laughs> Cause she never likes it when I go off script. It's dangerous. It is dangerous, <laughs> but my goal but you mentioned that you wanted to see uh, people with disabilities de define self-determination for themselves. How would you define self-determination in the way you've come to understand it? What self-determination means to me is to be able to make my own decisions and to understand how to make those decisions. So to be, make informed decisions, to be able to um, have the money I need to be able to make the decisions I want to make come true. So to have self-directed supports. But at first, we didn't know what to call those when we first came up with the ideas. See, there's a reason I listened and learned from Nancy. So in, in the 20 years that we've been doing this, what changes? Has, has anything changed, do you think? I think a lot of things have changed. I think, and I want to, to, you guys to help me do this. How many of you guys live in the community and are a part of your community? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. <clears throat> so that's one thing that I think that we got to do. And how many of you guys have a job out in the community and get this, get money and get to do things that you want to do in your community. And then the, one of the other things that's important is um, how many of you guys have friends that aren't paid staff or have a boyfriend, girlfriend? Come on, fess up. <laughs> so those are things that I think that have happened now. Well, I, I think you're right. We've got a long way to go, as you all know better than anyone else. But we have come some way. And, you know, the great thing about the SAVE Conference is it's a chance to celebrate all the progress that we and you have made. So... Um, you know, when I think about issues of self-determination, as Nancy has said, 
I think it's really important to just remember it's about making things happen in your own life. Causing things to happen as opposed to somebody else making things happen to you or for you. So one last question, Nancy, and then I'll, I'll quit embarrassing you. So what do we, what do we still have to do? Have, have we done everything we need to do? Can we hang up our hats and go away? Close down the institutions and have people be a part of their community. And there's research to support that. Would you like to say that again, or it was once enough? All right, all right. So what else? Anything else? What other things need to happen? I think that was going to be my next statement. To close all sheltered workshops and have people have real jobs with real money. You know, I'm reminded of a story of a friend of ours from our days with the Ark, T.J. Monroe, was once gaveling in a, a, a self-advocacy meeting and, and he was trying to get all the members of the self-advocacy group to, to quiet down and, and he pounded his gavel and he said, he said, pay attention, I have a revolution. Now he meant to say he had a resolution, but I think he was right. He had a revolution and that's what this is, it's a revolution. So as we think about issues of self-determination in the future now, Nancy's laid out some very clear next steps, which I'm in complete agreement with. And I wanted to provide you a chance to think about self-determination now, but also maybe 10 years from now. Let's don't go 20 years in the future. Let's talk about self-determination in, in the year 2020. You're at the SABE meeting. It's in, where shall we have it? Hawaii? Yeah, Anyone Hawaii. want to go to Hawaii 2020? Yes. Carl has agreed to coordinate that. <laughs> and you're at that conference because you're at all these conferences because you're part of a revolution. You're part of a movement. And this is where you get your batteries recharged. And you, and you get together with friends who remind you how important it is what you do. And so think about what issues of self-determination might look like then. And one of the things that is going to make a big difference in your life and in my life and will influence these issues of self-determination in the year 2020 our technology. How many of you use a cell phone, have an iPhone, have a, any type of technology device? A lot of you do, and a lot more of you are going to have access to technology as more and more technology is developed to support you to do the things you want. <laughs>